you know, now that the mowing is done, I came back and I noticed that I've got a coolant leak on the skid steer. Well, actually, you can't see that anymore. Anyways, there is coolant down there, and uh, we're gonna look into this because I can see coolant right. Well, if you look under this hose back farther, coolant back there. Let's get this apart and see what's going on. I made the leak worse. I accidentally ripped this hose right here. I accidentally ripped it. That wasn't our original leak. I gotta clean this up because I can't even see much of anything in here. So let's uh, fire up the old power washer and see what we can do. Morning, everyone. As you all know, we moved our wood boiler from over here to over next to the wood shop or next to the shop and the reason being is because we want to heat or have the ability to heat that building but also we still want to keep our house heated so you saw the trenches that we dug a while back they go all the way through here that takes that black pipe you see over there all the way under the ground all the way over to here and once it gets over here we have to connect it into the old one which is right there so that we can basically effectively transfer heat from those two places so i'm gonna do that now because tomorrow like i said it's supposed to be 73 tomorrow and it's gonna rain which we need the rain so we want to uh make sure we're taking advantage of this weather i don't want to deal with it tomorrow after it's rained because this is going to fill with water and then it's really going to be a pain to do it so let's get started i gotta grab some tools for those of you that are new to the channel, the wood boiler, we've had it for, oh, well, we had a smaller one before that that actually came with the house when we bought it. We upgraded that one because we knew in time we were going to have a, another building, either a, the, the garage or another shop building to heat. And that wood boiler is capable of heating 10,000 square feet. And if you're not familiar with the, if you're not familiar with the wood boiler, what it does is there's a firebox that firebox heats in this case 300 gallons of water up to a set temperature so we have our set it'll kick the fans off at 180 degrees and then when the water temperature falls back down to 160 it'll kick the fans back on again and it'll keep doing that throughout the day throughout the night doesn't matter all you gotta do is just make sure it has wood and it'll do the rest it'll pretty much do on its own and it's a very cheap and effective way to heat your home or your shop or whatever it is that you're wanting to heat, assuming that you have wood, you know, kind of readily available. We don't have that problem here because Missouri, we well, South Central Missouri, we have a lot of woods. But all we're going to do now is connect these two together. So I just need these tubing cutter, uh, box blade, and grab my PEX crimper out. It's already set for one inch because we use this one for the one inch lines that run through the paddocks. I'll need this and I'll need this. And then we should be good. It has been a cool and kind of dreary day. Uh, you'll notice that I'm in pants and boots and typically in the summertime when it's 90 degrees, I don't wear that stuff. It's too hot. I have to wear it at work with the army and so I just don't wear it at home. I usually wear shorts and flip flops. The uh, anyways, yeah, the weather changed dramatically. The high today was 74, supposed to be 74. It's probably pretty close to it. And uh, now that the sun poked out a little bit, it actually feels pretty decent. A couple of things on the agenda today, since this morning, well, 
this morning and a good chunk of the afternoon, I spent cleaning up all my mess uh, with tools that I had spread out from hay season and uh, just random repairs on the skid steer while I was trying to stack hay and all that stuff. So the air conditioning on the 7045 hasn't worked since I've had it. Well, I mean, it, let me rephrase it. It has worked, but not well. And part of it's been, I thought I had a leak. Well, I didn't have a leak. And Jason has HVAC business and he checked it out for me and he said, hey, you know, uh, the compressor and stuff looks like it's relatively new. Did they change the expansion valve? I was like, I don't know. So anyways, he recommended replacing the expansion valve. We've done that. And uh, now we've actually had it on pressure or under vacuum rather. My gauges, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, they used to be correct, and now they're off by about 30 uh, inches of mercury. I, I have no idea why, but they are. So anyways, we, uh, we pulled vacuum on this, and we've had it right here at the uh, A on bar, and it's actually held now for two days almost. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up and charge the air conditioning, and once we get that charged, uh, hopefully in the next week or so we have a very nice viewer that found windows for us the uh, back windows over here oh the magnet's sticky the back windows over here have been broke uh, this one's been broke for two years now and this one I'm not sure when it got broke I don't even remember it getting broke but at any rate it's broke and we needed both of them and they found them and said, hey, you know, we've got these, we can get them to you. So I said, well, that'd be awesome. I could really use them. So they're sending them here and uh, we'll get them replaced. And then hopefully we have air conditioning in the tractor. The, the, the tractor doesn't have to have air conditioning. Uh, I mean, none of it has to, but it sure makes it a lot nicer in there when you have it. So the first thing we're gonna do is, oops, I'm gonna back that off a little more. We're gonna go ahead charge the air conditioning on this and then once we get a charge we'll start the tractor up and run the air all arrived in excellent condition I cannot complain one bit and he was even nice enough that left the hinges on, so all I have to do is hook it on here and then connect my bottom hinges. Oh, it doesn't get much easier than that. That is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Anthony, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, I, can't, I can't say thank you enough. You're gonna have some shirts on your way here shortly too. That's a, uh, boy. That's gonna be really nice, especially since we'll walk over here. Uh, last week, no, I think it was last week. Anyways, we had pulled all the, we did a vacuum or hooked a vacuum pump up to the air conditioner on the Alice and we went ahead and got all that drained out and held it held it and we went ahead and put new Freon in and now we're good to go. We originally thought that the issue was that it didn't have enough in it, so we were going to weigh it in. And then uh, Jason said, you know, hey, if they've got a newer compressor and stuff on there, chances are they didn't replace the expansion valve, and it's probably kicking it off. Because it would get cold, and then, I don't know, 20 minutes later, it would be hot. Like hot air, like from outside hot air. It was terrible. And it wasn't because, so these tractors, they have, uh, well, I guess all tractors do, but anyways, they have the heat. Uh, there's a heat exchanger up there for heat so it's literally a coil that the fan pulls air across and then that's how it gets heat from these hoses I don't know how, if you can see them or not it might be too dark but right here there is a this is one of our heater hoses the other one's right behind it right there well we put a valve on here so that we can turn it off so there's no heat going through there during the summertime and they're countering each other so that is one thing we did. The second thing we did is that um, we cleaned everything out. Cleaned out the coil, cleaned out the heat exchanger up there. We cleaned out everything. The condenser, you name it, it's clean. And 
same thing. You know, it'd get cold for I don't know, 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, and then it'd get hot and it wouldn't get cool again until the next time the tractor had cooled down and you started it and used it again. So we just assumed, like I said, the heat exchanger, or the, or the uh, expansion valve was the issue. So we went ahead and replaced that. And now the heat, uh, or sorry, the air is much colder. It'll, you can tell that the air is working and that the air is actually cold. But because the way our windows are, right here, that lets a lot of heat in. So that made a big problem. And then once we replace this one, so this and this is where our big problems were. So we shouldn't have an issue fixing that and then moving on um, to fix the pump. That'll be our next thing that we, pick, that we fix. We're going to bring it over there. We're gonna throw our window in and then I gotta get some stuff figured out on that skid steer. And then we will take the skid steer out and we'll put the tractor in there. I'm gonna do my best to show you while I take this off, hopefully. The top, actually since this is kind of split in half, it's pretty easy to show. Anyways, the top, I can set, I can pull it off those hinges. It's really easy to do. Um, I'm actually gonna to have to put you guys back here though because I can't hold you and do that. <laughs> 